Hi everyone, welcome to Learn to Draw with the Lincoln Public Library. My name is Tony and I work at the library and I'll be teaching you today. I will be using the techniques of Mark Kessler. He's an artist and author and TV personality. He's also given us permission to copy parts of his book to make these cool lesson packets for you. So pick yours up while supplies last at your Lincoln Public Library. It will come with your lesson packet, this great summer reading bookmark that also can be used as a straight edge for drawing, and this awesome pencil with the all important eraser. And if you'd like to check his book out, which is right here, We've made it easy for you. We've put the Dewey Decimal number right here so you can find the book very easily in your children's section of the library. So come on down and get it. All right, are you ready? Today we are going to learn to draw a simple cube and a simple cylinder because if you can draw these two things, you could draw almost anything using your imagination. So turn your lesson book to the simple television in your packet. And don't worry if you don't have a packet, all you really need is a blank piece of paper and something to draw with. Okay, you ready? Let's go. So we are going to be using the technique called foreshortening. And that means to distort an object to make one side appear closer than the other side. All right, let's get started. So we're going to start with our cube. And we are going to make four dots. I'm going to put a dot here and then a dot directly below it, not very far away. And then right in the middle, we're going to go out this way and draw a dot and then about the same distance this way and draw a dot and see how these guys line up and those two line up now we're going to connect the dots so we're going to go whoop and whoop and whoop and whoop I'm gonna make this a little bit darker so you can see it. I find sound effects make me draw better too. Now, we are going to start in the middle here and draw a straight line down. So go right here and go. I'm make it a little darker. Now we're going to draw a straight line down from the other two corners. They're, they're going to be a little bit shorter because they're farther away. Okay, so we're going to draw a straight line here and a straight line here about the same length. Now we are going to connect the bottom of our cube. So we're going to go whoop and whoop. It's already looking so awesome, right? How's yours look? I bet it looks great. Okay, so now we have our cube. And remember when we were talking about foreshortening and distorting an object? So we know we're drawing a square, right? And if you look at the top of this square, it looks like a diamond instead of a square. That's because we have foreshortened it. We've squished it and distorted it to make it look like one edge is closer than the other. Now, another thing we can do now that we've got our great cube is we can add some shading. And shading is when you darken the side of your object that is opposite from the side of your imaginary light source. So let's say our light source is coming from over here and I'm just gonna draw a little sun right here. Boop, 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 boop. That means this whole side is getting light. The top is getting light, this side, the front that we can't see is getting light. So that means we're gonna shape this back side here. Are you ready? You could do it all kinds of ways. I like to do it like this. You can actually just color it 
or you can make these lines. I'm gonna put a few more to make it even darker. There we go. Oh, it's pretty dark, right? Now some over here. There we go. Look at that. Now the next thing we can do is add a shadow. A shadow is cast on the same side as the dark side of your object. So we've had the sun here, we've got the dark side of our object, and the shadow is going to be over here. Now you're going to find the bottom of your object and you're going to draw a straight line going this way. And then you're just going to shade accordingly. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not perfect. Yep, there's a shadow. Now it really looks like we've got a three-dimensional cube sitting there. And once you can draw that, you can turn that same cube into almost anything. It could be a television, for example. So you would, we want to draw the screen, so we'll draw a straight line here. And the straight line over here is going to be a little shorter again because it's farther away. So this one is going to be like that. Now we're going to connect our lines and we want to follow the same angle as the line above and the line below. So this line is going to follow this angle. So I'm gonna draw a straight line to here and then another straight line to here. Now it looks like there's a either a hole or a screen there. So now, if we're going to draw the TV, we can draw some little dials. If we draw a little oval here, and a little oval here. We're making an, an oval because we're foreshortening again. We're distorting the roundness to make it look like one edge is closer to us than the other. So once you draw your two ovals, you'll draw a straight line like this, and a straight line at the bottom, straight line at the top, straight line at the bottom, and then you're going to connect the bottom with a curve this time because we're drawing a round object. So we're going to curve it and curve it. And now it looks like it has two little knobs pointing out so you could change the channel on your TV. And if our sun is coming over here, we can add our shading again. So let's do some shading on this side. There we go. All right. So now that we've learned how to draw a cube, and remember, once you can draw a cube, the cube can turn into anything. Like, what if I decide it's not a TV anymore, and that's just a hole in the box? I can draw a straight line here and then I'm going to draw another line right next to this all the way to the top from here. So draw a straight line all the way up like that and now I want to follow again this diagonal line here and it's going to go right here. Draw a straight line here. Now there's a hole in the box. Now, if we really want to give it some depth, we can color this in because the sun can't get in there, right? And we can make this super dark because there's no sun getting in there. There we go. Now, if you use your imagination, they've, I've got a hole in the box, but if you made a lot of little boxes, they could be windows, or they could be a door, they could be whatever you would like it to be. So now let's try drawing a cylinder. So when we do a cylinder, we are going to start off with a 
dot here and a dot here. And again, we're going to use for shortening. Just like in this illustration here, you've got the penny. You know it's a circle, it's round if you were looking at it straight on, right? But if you were looking at it from an angle and one edge was closer to you than the other, then you would make an oval drawing because this, the shape changes as it changes its angle, just like my hand. As it changes, now it looks flat. Now it looks like a hand, right? That's what we're doing. So you've got your two dots. Now we're going to draw an oval for the top of our cylinder. So we're going to connect the bottom of our oval and we're just going to make a nice curvy line like this. And then we're going to curve around to the other side. And whenever you're drawing a foreshortened circle, the bottom curve is always a little more curvy than the top. Okay, so now we have to draw the sides of our cylinder. So I'm going to draw another dot straight down below here, right here. And I want one about in the same direction, right below here. And now I'm gonna draw that straight line. Yep. And yep. So now we have the sides of our cylinder. Now we have to connect the bottom of our cylinder. And again, this closest side is going to be more curvy than the back side. So we're really going to curve it out and go whoop. And now we have a three dimensional cylinder. And this could be anything. It could be a hat, it could be a cake, it could be a candle, it could be anything in your imagination. So now, Let's give it some bonus features, shall we? And let's add some extras. So let's add our shading. So the sun's over here. So that means it's going to hit the top and not so much on this side, right? So we're going to shade it. And I like to give the shading a little curve, just like the shape of the cylinder. There we go. Now it looks like this is the back side where there's no sun and this is the front side where the sun is shining down on it. Now let's add a shadow. And for the shadow, we are going to start from the very tippy part that is closest to us, which is this point right here. And we're going to draw a straight line out. My marker is going out. And we're going to draw that shadow to here. Now it looks like it's actually sitting on the ground. Now, another thing we could do to make it look really three-dimensional is we can add a horizon line. And it's so easy to do. Watch this. All you do is you just decide where is the ground? And you're gonna draw that horizon line right behind your object. And let's say, I think the ground is right here. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. Sometimes it's better if it's not perfect. It could be shaped all kinds of different ways. And now it looks like this cylinder is very close to us and we've got this horizon way back here. And the items that you draw really small in the background look like they're really far away. So this can looks really big, right? There could be, um, there could be somebody, a person standing over here. Boop, 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 boop. Hi, I'm way far away. You can barely even see me. The can looks like it's so much bigger, but it's not. If this person was to walk up to the can, guess what? They would be this big. Right? So now that you could draw a 
cube and you could draw a cylinder. You could draw almost anything by just using your imagination. And I would love it if you would post your pictures on this site and let us see them. And we'll show them at the library too, if you like. All right. Thanks everybody. I'll see you next time.